Live from HMD Studio, it is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the music business and the music culture. It is Busy Black Business Month, so we are bringing in some incredible black businesses in all different fields. But first, I am your host, Armand Sadler, vegan chorizo poppy, founder of Bald Nigga Ballers. Today, I am the mac and cheese maestro. (laughs) You will understand why when we get to who our guest is but you know it's, it's stay busy it's stay hungry and one guy that makes sure that i am never hungry when i link him <laughs> the, the gumbo god himself, himself. <laughs> my co-host That's how you feeling funny. what's up y'all nick early executive producer and co-host and stay, stay busy. busy i'm feeling great today man mm-hmm. i got sipping on some uh some golden oolong tea you know I, as y'all can see we have some the real nice, real nice mugs, shot courtesy of our guests here, who our mind is going to introduce in a second here. So everything's tasting a little bit better in this mug. Absolutely. Absolutely. I that tea, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a different vibe right now. <laughs> so as I said, Busy Black Business Month is here. So feel free to DM or email us any black businesses that you want to highlight in any fields. Black creators, black brand, brands, black companies. We love them all. We want to support them all. I want to give a big thank you to Savon and Alex from the Need to Know Pod for coming through last week for an amazing episode we had a great time with them the reception has been great so thank you for all the feedback positivity and to our new subscribers yeah yeah yeah, gonna stay a while it's worth it trust Uh us make sure you tap into all of our busy sessions and youtube shorts all available on youtube we got specific playlists for all of them so you'll be able to tap in very easily shout out to our vp of everything the man that you cannot see but you can feel kieran hurley and of course hmd studio camden and jay holding us down doing the damn thing per usual but the reason why we are here we have another incredible black entrepreneur black creator now um this person is the owner and creator of a place near and dear to east flatbush brooklyn's heart his Caribbean influence space was created alongside his mother Donna and oh, provides nice. quality eats and catering service, tasty drinks and top tier bar service, an art gallery, and a venue for creators to push their endeavors forward. You might have joined them recently for their insecure watch parties, but they've got a variety of events. You might have been there at some point and not even known where you were, but you probably went back. Now, inspiration comes from anywhere, but for our guest, his cafe started all because of a bad haircut. Joining us from Black Restaurant Week's Black Plate Awards, voted Best Cafe, the Lips Cafe. We got Jermaine Weeks here. Jermaine, how you what feeling? Up, Jermaine? I feel like I didn't use that every week. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I, when anybody asks me about my space, I want that clip. Like, yeah, we got let, you. Me, let me get that clip. Like That was amazing. That yeah. was succinct. <laughs> like, the voice, everything. Like, hey, thank you. Thank you. I, I don't even, when they ask me that question, I want your voice to stop. <laughs> Like, I don't even need to answer the question. Like, hold on, let me pull up this voice note yeah, real quick. Yeah, that was, yeah, that, you, everything you need to know is right there. <laughs> that, amazing, that, was, that was That was beautiful. Of Thank course. you, man. Love it. Thank you for joining us, man. How are you feeling? I feel good, man. It's, um, I'm happy to be here. Like, this is really cool. Um, happy that you guys, you know, want to take the time out with me. Yeah, for sure. You know, and... um. I'm um, looking forward to this. I think this is going to be really, a really good little vibe right it's now. Good. So, it's good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Trust Especially me. that yeah, cup. Yeah, yeah, Show yeah. the cup. Oh, yeah. You know, you know. You know. <laughs> you, know it's not, you can't... Um, it's tea. It's, it's tea. It's tea. It's ginger, we, we'll it's ginger it lemonade. Tea. It's ginger lemonade. Ginger lemonade. <laughs> ginger lemonade. Ginger <laughs> lemonade. Little, little kick in there. Little <laughs> little kick extra in there. I call it the Spike Lee. Spike, Spike Lee. Oh, okay. Spike Lee, you know? so come on okay. now. Yeah. 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 We're going to get into a real fun show, a real fun conversation. But you know, before that, we got to hit y'all with some preferences, some choices. So thank you for all of our listeners tapping back in. Whether you like jerk pork or curry goat, mm. milkshakes or root beer floats. Hot coffee or iced, and running or riding bikes. So jerk pork or curry goat? Well, what's your preference, Jermaine? Curry goat all day. Curry, curry goat, goat gang. Where's your family from? 
St. Vincent. St. Oh, Vincent okay. From yeah, Vincent, yeah, from yeah. Vincent. Shout out DeAndre. What up, yeah. DeAndre? You know, Love you. Yeah, and one of my Vincent. good friends is is from St. Vincent. Yeah, you know, there's not many of us, but we mighty. He goes hard. We go hard because there's not many of us. We have to. <laughs> Shout out to y'all for the uh, the saltfish patty. That was yep. the first time yeah, I ever had yeah. that. You got Amazing. saltfish and bakes. That's our main thing. Yeah. Um, We do like... Sawfish and provision, and mm. we do so much with sawfish, it's crazy. I love at the it. shop. We got sawfish plantain bones, we put sawfish in the plantain wraps, Ooh. everything. So, like, sawfish is like our main thing over there, and mm. breadfruit, mm. you know. Yes, so, yes, those yes. two things are like very, very um, it, omnipresent there. So, of course, you know, amazing. definitely had to incorporate that in the mm. shop, you know, yeah. the way amazing. we did because that's a culture, yeah. Milkshakes or root beer floats. Oh, I'm not really in the sweet things like that, but if I had okay. to take, if I had to make a choice, I'd say milkshake. Yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. milkshake. I didn't even say jerk pork or curry goat. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Bro, I'm, I'm Jamaican, pork. so. Yeah. You, ah, probably go, you probably jerk go to pork. pork. I know I, but you know, <laughs> you know what? I, I really love goat, and yeah, so, so. I, I don't know. It's really hard to yeah. choose. I'm going to just go with jerk pork, because yeah. right now. My I mother would have said jerk pork. If Donna mm. was here, <laughs> jerk pork. She loved pork, man. Jerk pork goes crazy. Pork Swine is fine, divine, and right, right on time. time. Exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly. Did I say what's up, Hey, they said it, not me. I'm, in, I'm, I'm <laughs> impartial. I'm indifferent. <laughs> Whatever your vice is. You there, know? You go. there you go. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, yeah I'd shake. probably say I'm, I'm a milkshake guy, too. Milkshakes, like, for sure. When yeah. I was young, I did the root beer floats, but. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we got fraps at the shop, so that's kind of pretty similar to milkshakes. What don't y'all got? Yeah, yeah. Man, I need to pull up. No, we trying to figure out. People always ask me, like, you know, what we are. It's hard for me to um mm-hmm. kind of explain what we are because mm-hmm. yeah. we have so many things. So I just kind of call it like a creative space, a social, exactly. social club. You there know, you go. don't block yourself in, yourself. black man. Never. I might add something tomorrow. Like you Facts. know, you know, I might bring oxtail in there. You Oof. know, just make it. Root. Wait, I <laughs> seen made. on the menu y'all got oxtail. What was that? Like sandwiches? Yeah, we do like all that at different times because mm-hmm. you know that oxtail sandwich. Wow, it was actually not even us because this is what we do at the space. It was actually um a friend of mine, Ty. I don't know if you know him, but he's like a uh, Tyreek. He does cooking. Mm. It's like good look um, fire stuff. So what we do is sometimes you know we have invite different chefs to take do over the space. Like, yeah, yeah like, you know. Okay, so fine. um one thing he brought was that that jerk. That oxtail, um, it was like oxtail. It was like a, it was chicken. like a, 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 a with flatbread, like, like a roti. You know, yeah, almost? it wasn't roti. He did it in like a soft. I can't even describe it. He did like a, but it's a kind of like a taco. Okay, like a soft taco, and it was it was it went it went real well. <laughs> wow, you know, it went real it well. So you know, fantastic. So, yeah, we've never done oxtail, but it's something like we we'll probably do like maybe you know brunch or mm. once a week. You know, we try to figure out different things to do. Um, yeah. Just keep it fresh. You know, you always got to keep yeah. it fresh. So, like, you know, maybe one day a week we might just bring an oxtail or do, like, a random brunch or we do oxtail. You know, fire. So, uh, fire. You know, keep, it, keep it fresh. I love it. Word, yeah. word. Um, for our coffee drinkers, hot coffee or iced coffee? Um, For me, definitely hot just because mm-hmm. I... Okay. I um I take my time with things. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you know if I have an iced coffee, it's gonna be water. Chug. Yeah. <laughs> it's, gonna oh, water. it's gonna be water. It's gonna, it's gonna be water, water. It's gonna be water because it's gonna melt. Like you know, right, right. I really, I really take, take my time. With time so right. even in the summer, I drink hot coffee just because mm-hmm. I take my time with things. Right. So I, you know, and I like the the taste of coffee. So I usually get like Americanos where you can really taste it. Yeah. So um definitely hot for me. Okay. You know? Cool. I'm an iced coffee guy. I yeah. love iced coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just for me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's going to be water. Like, you right, know, and I'm right, be like, damn, yeah. I wasted my money. Like, nah, you know. I feel you. Yeah. yeah, I'm a hot coffee. These days, I'll be drinking my coffee black. I don't be putting too much Nothing in it. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I can't do all the sweet, sweet coffee yeah. no more. So, yeah. hot yeah. coffee for black, sure. Black, not even milk. It's really <laughs> black history. Head, you feel you know? me? You black feel history, me? black future, whatever you want to call it. Ain't no you know? whiteness going no, in my you coffee. Know, exactly. We, not, we ain't putting no, no coloring in yeah. there. <laughs> Keep the proclivities out exactly, there. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Lastly, running or riding bikes? Uh, definitely running. Running. Because, yeah. you know, I got problem with balance. <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it. I can't swim. I can't float. Oh, oh wow. you hold know, on. You can't swim? I can't Come on, float. I can't Come on now, float. Bro. Oh, man. I, don't even, I stay away from the water because, you know, people like to take chances. I don't yeah. take chances. I stay out. I, I, I put fair. my feet in the water. Mm-hmm. I might go in a pool if it's like four feet. Right, right, right. <laughs> but I am not. I don't. I, I got a problem with balance, so oh, I, 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 I stick to the running. I respect it. Yeah, I saw on the on the IG you you got like a certificate for for track. Yeah, um, you know, you know, we partner with a lot of um people. We just do a lot of cool um Bro. things with people. So you know, that's a run club. I actually knew the the person who um runs that run club okay. like way before Lips. Um, back when he was working for Nike because he used to be a pacer mm. at Nike and I met him through one of my close friends who was a pacer at Nike mm, and that nice. vibe was so dope I kind of missed those days like because like, after the runs 
You know, we used to go to the bar, we used to kick it, yeah, it used to be yeah, a yeah. social thing, everybody survived, you know, yeah. people would become friends, people would date, people, would, you know, it was just a good vibe, you know, it's like, I, I, so I feel like anytime you put like a group of people together, it just, mm-hmm. it becomes like a soap opera, you know, Always. you know, so it's like, Always, you know, no matter man. what, you know, it's just the social cues are, so it was really a good vibe and, you know, we kept that relationship going and, you know, now he has his run club and, uh, you know, every once, any, every now and then, you know, he... He starts his run where he starts it and he ends it at Lips. Mm. Okay. Or, you know, and then or other spots, but this nice. one's at Lips. Like today, I think he went to BK Circus. Oh, fine. You know, you know, so um, end his race there. And, uh, you know, then they'll come in there, they'll drink, you know, they'll get something to eat, they'll mm. vibe, and yeah. it's his way of supporting local businesses. Yeah. And it's also our way, you know, we give them a discount. So it's first day's members, well, you know, so his members could be like, you know, if, you know, anytime they come to Lips, they get a percent off. Yeah. So it's a really good vibe, you know, and he gave us a certificate because we, you know, work well together and we proud of each other. Nice. You know, and I, I like that, you know, we in a point in time, you know, you know, as people, as black people, as black creatives, as black culture, where I feel like, we are rewarding each other more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we're acknowledging each other more. We're supporting yeah. each other more. Whether that's financially or if that's just encouragement. Yeah, you know? anything. Yeah. You know, encouragement and, positive, and positivity is mm-hmm. worth more than anything else. Yeah. You know, as long as you're giving me positive vibes, you know, that reverberates in ways we can't see. Of course. You know, because mm-hmm. then you you might be tell somebody else that and tell somebody else <laughs> that. And then, you know, that creates a, yeah. a domino effect. So I, I'm just, you know, he's really cool. He's a really genuine guy. And... um. We try to, we always try to foster relationships like that yeah. and give people opportunities yeah. to uh, create and, you know, manifest whatever they're trying to do. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I didn't expect that. I ain't, I ain't expect that re- that award, you know. That's really cool. <laughs> he did it in a very, very, very uh, high-pitched way, you know. You know, so that's, cool, you know that's, that's classic him. Uh, there we yeah. go. Shout out to you. Shout yeah, out to you. Man. Let's jump into this chat real quick. Very light week, depending on what you're interested in and all that. So, of course, the Super Bowl just passed. Um, I, I enjoyed it very much because I won money off the Rams. So, shout out to Odell, Aaron Donald, Matt Stafford, <laughs> Jalen Ramsey for, you know, putting some dollars in my pockets. But, you know, the main thing of enjoyment for our culture with the Super Bowl was the Super Bowl halftime show where we got to see Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar perform 50 Cent with a guest appearance. Yeah. How, how, how do we feel about the show? I think it was amazing. Yeah, you know, I yeah. think it had such surprise moments and just the artistic value of it, you know, mm-hmm. the the, mm-hmm. the way they dance and the choreography and the segues into different acts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it was very purposeful. And um, I like that, you know, them getting that opportunity, they, they took full advantage of it yeah. and they didn't play any games with it. Because, you know, a lot of times with stuff like that, they... They look for reasons to be like, oh, that was that was that was I, right. you know, that right, was right. all that. But there's no way you could um discredit what they did. Exactly. Um, you know, you know, and then I have such mixed emotions about it because you know I like this. You know, Snoop Dogg came in his blue bandana, yeah. you know, <laughs> sea walked, yeah, threw up the the sea, you know. But then you know I, I don't like you know the fact that you know sometimes the artistic value has to be um mitigated a bit. Like you mm-hmm. know I feel like if Kendrick has a line that says Popo. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. should be able to say it. You know, yeah, that's hundred percent. You know, they say a lot of crazier things in other yeah genres of music as well. Yeah. You know, so I feel like you know, in the beginning of the line, you know, you know, you know, Pyrus and Crips all got along. Probably gonna be down there his song. I mean, I feel like you know that's his song. You know, he should be able to say. He should be able to say. You know, so certain things like that. You know, that wasn't on you know us. That's just the way the system works. Mm-hmm. Um, was just uh, you know, not you know, not. I wish it would have just been the whole. Yeah, it was censor- censorship. Yeah. yeah, but overall, man, that's probably the best halftime show. Yeah, you know, ever. And you know, they even got Fifty Cent coming, yeah. coming upside down <laughs> like the old days. He he looked like he could he could hang now yeah. like, like the old days though. You know, he looked like he could hang like that old days. He was but, breathing heavy. Yeah, too he was breathing bars, real man. heavy. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> like he was breathing real heavy. You know, yeah. and um, Eminem taking a knee. Mm-hmm. Um, that reverberates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, that reverberates a lot. So, um, but they didn't want him to do it either. Like he mentioned it before, and then yeah. I'm glad he just went yeah, through yeah, it know, anyways. Yeah, you know, it just like you know, I'm sure they didn't want Snoop Dogg to come out like that. Mm-hmm. You know, but they they earned their stripes. Snoop hit the gas before he yeah. went on. Oh yeah, he did too. <laughs> that man with well, he, he couldn't control himself yeah. no I more. Mean, like hey, it is, it was legal. In uh, the exactly, very true. So yeah. he was well within his rights. Exactly. So like Snoop. Um, but that's crazy. It's legal yeah. there, so everybody probably was getting high no, in the stands. Was, yeah, LeBron was probably out there zooted. That probably was, he probably <laughs> smelling real hate, real heavy in that in those stands. So yeah. Yeah. that's cool. But um, overall, like that's the best halftime show. Mm. Um, it was good to see hip hop, and you know when they put the camera to Kanye or Jay mm-hmm. or Beyonce, yeah. and it was all, 
you know, it was like a moment for us. For nah, Shane, you I, know? Yeah, so that was cool. I definitely think you got to see, if you didn't know, you got to see the magnitude of what Dr. Dre has been yeah. involved in. Mm -hmm. And I love, you know, as being a, a LA native myself, just seeing certain things being put on that scale. Like, folks who know, who know, Tams. Tams is like the, like, the hood burger spot. Like yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of the the staples yeah. in LA. Like if you want to be around the people, you know, go to like a local spot, go to Tams, you know, mm -hmm. like for the burgers and everything. So it was cool to see that like in the 3D version yeah. and like the, the 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 time they put on the jib shot. Like it was yeah. just like mm -hmm. wow, they really they really high highlighted and showcased LA. And I think it being in LA LA folks, you know, and then Dr. Dre, it just really, really was very authentic and it yeah. rang through from the, the theatrics of the dancers to yeah. like the whole vibe of the party and like the uh the set design was, it yeah. was yeah. unbelievable. It was dope. It was unbelievable. Dr. Dre put up millions for that. Shout it was him. unbelievable. Like the whole like sort of yeah. like uh LA um what is it like map, like you know, like a satellite map, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. from above. It was just beautiful. Yeah. I love the Kendrick. Um, shout out to Proverb for pointing out the Meteor Man reference. Like, mm. yeah, <laughs> I yeah. was like, oh wow, I didn't even think <laughs> yeah, of that. Yeah, like, yeah. You, yo, Meteor Man is like one of the blackest movies. Like, mm. you that's, a fact. that's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> like, I don't know nobody that's not black that knows that movie. Mm. What and, part uh, of the performance was your favorite, or both your favorite? Uh, I, I love the choreography of Kendrick's joint. I mm -hmm. think that was like a peak for me. And I, Mary just killed it. I, I would have loved to see Mary do a, a few more songs, honestly. Mm -hmm. I felt like we didn't get enough of her. She looked great, too. Like, So, yeah, I'd say Mary and Kendrick. Kendrick, I feel like, always has me on the edge of my seat. I'm like, what's he about mm -hmm. to do? What's he about to do? Mm -hmm. And so I really enjoyed and that you haven't part seen him in a while. Yeah, like, yeah. Capacity, you know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love seeing yeah. Pac up there, too. That, that yep. really brought me a lot of joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think about, uh, you know, the game thing? He was snubbed. Oh, the game said something about yeah. being. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't say it, but he he reposted or liked yeah. someone who said that he should have been involved. Because you know, like people always say, you know, he found, you know, he didn't find catcher, but he put him on aftermath. Mm -hmm. You know, Eminem, Fifty. It was like game was a big, you know, part. No, of that. game was a huge part. Yeah, of that. yeah. but I mean, important. it's like where does it stop? Yeah, where does the yeah, line stop? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I I think him compared to the five that we yeah, got can. And, and Fifty. Yeah, you can. I'm sorry. Like it kind of sucks that his generation was skipped over. I guess if you consider well, fifties his generation yeah, yeah, yeah. too. I mean, it, it is what it is, man. Like um, it's tough for him, but it probably hurt because if, if you pick LA, Kendrick, and he's LA, right? Of course, you know, it hurt. Yeah, yeah. Of course, because yeah, yeah, yeah. Eminem yeah. from Detroit, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, fifty from New York. But hey, man, like if it's between Kendrick and Game, uh, people, between, we're game, probably it's between Game Kendrick. and anybody on that stage. Yeah, it gotta be. Yeah. It gotta be them. It was. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was a tough choice. I'm sure it was like, dang, yeah, we could do Game, but like. Kendrick yeah. Lamar. Yeah. I yeah, mean, it's Kendrick just the time of the show too. Yeah. Like, I'm sure if they could have fit it, they would have fit him in. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, overall, really enjoyable, enjoyable game, enjoyable show. So shout out to yeah. uh, everyone who was involved with that. We got a versus this week: the Valentine's Day special, Music Soul Child versus Anthony Hamilton. How, how, how do we feel about the versus battle? In general, it was great to see what they did. Like they brought, they really went hard with the theatrics of it. Like mm -hmm. Jermaine Dupri was Anthony's uh, DJ. Uh, music brought out Robert Glasper, Donnell. Um, who else? He brought out Lucky. Lucky mm -hmm. they did over, yeah. which was dope. Yeah, that's and I was fire. like, that yeah. was dope. They did that, and then um, Anthony also brought the Hamiltons. He brought out Raheem Devon. He brought out Kevin Ross. Eric Roberson, like a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. So it was like they they did that thing. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. So at one point though, I'm gonna be one thousand. I don't know if the earpieces was off, something like the vocals was some some points I was like, hold on now. Hollande. Mm. <laughs> 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 All due respect, because those are my guys. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, nah, it was it was a second, like I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. well. <laughs> but uh it was it was overall just I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I didn't get a chance to see it. I, I feel like I'm a loser for that, but uh, I'll, I'll check <laughs> out the okay. check out the recap. Or yeah, something. I ain't, I ain't watch it. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was a busy week, really weird yeah, week yeah. for me. But, but um, um, I'm gonna ahead. check that out. But you know, music is my music. So child is my guy. So. Yeah, they both my guy, but I really like music. You know, yeah. so can't get better than so beautiful. You know? Yeah, for real, absolutely, <laughs> not. For real. absolutely not. Speaking of lucky day, we got the latest single uh, from the upcoming Candy Drip album dropping March 10th, 2022. This is NWA featuring Lil Durk. Now, I heard this uh, several months ago when I got sent the little sample pack. And um, yeah, so now it's uh, the world has it now. How, how, how do we feel about the new Lucky Day uh, single? I heard the album's coming on uh, March 10th. Yeah, I, I, I said that. Yeah. Were we talking about the single? No, we're talking about the album. <laughs> That's what I'm ready for. You don't for. want to talk about the single? I'm ready for the album. You got no feelings on the single? 
I'm, I'm, I'm indirectly giving my feelings yeah, about the single. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big Lucky fan. So mm. I need that album, Lucky. I think. Yeah, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna measure the whole album. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna measure the whole album. Like, yeah. I'm a big fan of his song. 100. percent I mean, yeah. he's he's yeah, a he's great incredible. person to be a fan of right now. I, I would you know to give some thoughts on the single since uh, my co-host is, <laughs> is no being the beat very is fire. I, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the production. Yeah, um, it, it was giving a little hotline blingish. Mm. You know, as we talked we talked about that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was yeah I'm just kind of ready for the album at I'm this trying point. To, trying to get his commercial single yeah. out. Yeah, you know? yeah. But <laughs> o- over is just as commercial to that's me. That's true. It is over is just as commercial. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think when we speak about this record, I, I think it's a good record, too. I think the presence of Lil Durk, it is more so a business move. It's mm-hmm. let make this song as streamable as possible. It'll pop up on charts. People will click it because it is Lil Durk's name. He's one of the hottest artists out right now. And he typically floats well and does his thing well on melodic R&B tracks and rap tracks. So yeah. in terms of the selection process, it was smart. In terms of the delivery, I didn't feel like Dirk needed to be there. The verse was barely anything um and yeah lucky could did it on his own i think i think it was a good song without dirk it's kind of like a why are you there type feature but then you when you think about the business of it and get, getting momentum as the album is less than a month away now it you know it makes sense dirk is there whether you like it or not i'm definitely not too high on the feature myself though so completely get that Lastly, to end off, Jack Harlow dropped a new single, Nail Tech. How are we feeling about the new Jack? I Jack thought that Harlow. was hard, bro. I enjoyed the video. I watched the video and listened to the song for the first time, mm-hmm. um, and I enjoyed it. I just think he's he's just fun, bro. Yeah. He's just fun. He's clever. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going anywhere. He's very commercial, like, yeah. and I just think he's he he makes the right plays, mm-hmm. like mentally. I think he makes the right plays. He's creative enough. I think he can go really far. Yeah, I can go really far. Say he's the best of his generation. Do you think so? No, he said that. Oh, oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you said that? No, no. <laughs> he said that. Yeah, he, he was talking heavy before yeah. the single came out. He has, he has a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. We're going to see. We'll yeah. keep, keep delivering. We'll see. Yeah. We'll have that conversation in a few mm-hmm. years. Yeah, I think for this track, I, I really enjoy the production as well. I think Jack has a great flow, a great delivery. I think one thing he can improve on mm-hmm. is his punchlines. He's got great yeah. setups for them. And then I hear the punchline, and I'm like... You, you you could have went a little harder with that. Yeah. Like his I, hooks too. Yeah, he's yeah his, his hooks give you some improvement some for stronger sure. Stronger hooks, more but catchy hooks. Yeah, he's he's got the potential. Like I've, I've been a Jack Harlow fan for a while, and I think you know for him to level up, like it, we have to see that improvement. And he has improved over time, but now it's like I'm really listening to his lyrics now. Like he's fun, he, he brings the yeah, energy, yeah. but like I'm really listening and analyzing like what you say and some of his some of his lines are real real basic kind of predictable sometimes so that's my only point of critique here but i enjoy nail tech so that's our chat let's jump into some tunes what we talking Before we get into our interview with our guest, Jermaine, we are going to play a segment called Read My Lips. And it's going to go quite literally. We are going to <laughs> mouth phrases to you, and you are going to have to try to read what, what we're saying. I already know this ain't going to do well. I already know this this is shout well. out to Lips Cafe. <laughs> we're we're, we're yeah, doing uh, a, a mouth, mo- yeah. what was it? mouth movement game. All right. I'm Exercise. Sure. It's not going to go well, but let's <laughs> go. I got faith in you. I got faith in you. All right. <clears throat> One more time. One more time. All right, three times it up. Um, blah blah blah. That's what I got for <laughs> there. We go. All right, <laughs> starting strong. <laughs> it was Fet Friday. Oh, I definitely get that. You <laughs> got it. CJ got it. Party we having tonight too. Yeah, that's where he got it from. That, that was okay, cool. I'm gonna do my best to not All laugh. Right, cool. I got therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't even know where else to go for this. Okay. <laughs> I'll do it for the camera for those who are watching. See if y'all can guess. Tell you me. Got, see, Jay got. Oh, y'all, y'all got it. Okay, I think I'm making it clear. If scared money don't make money. Oh, <laughs> I get therapy from that. Like scared money don't make scared money. Scared money needs therapy. All right. <laughs> All right. Next one. See, if you put your hand. My bad. That's not my fault. That was not my fault. My bad. My bad. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. I got like big drip. 
close. Big drip. One more time. Y'all probably think I'm like, <laughs> no, it's not even. Like, I'm like, I'm, 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 this is not my strong shit. <laughs> you can tell them what's the big dreams and heartbreak. Damn. Yeah, bro. I know what's going on here. Like, that's the heart that's in that's there right a, now. Right. That's another. That's I'm another. terrible. Everything, that's everything in the shop, bro. Yeah. That, that makes me seem like I don't even know what's going on in there. <laughs> okay, here we go. One from me. That's like a whole sentence. No, I got nothing? laugh. <laughs> one four one two no strand ab. Oh my goodness, <laughs> that's the address. You got like, laugh. You got exactly. Laugh. But yeah, ab one for one. Y'all killing it back there. They getting it. Yeah. They can see. It. I don't know. Y'all must. I'm be saying, like, am I making it clear? I hope I'm making it clear. I must have took a class for that or something <laughs> like. Y'all fall away too. <laughs> Armand got one more. All right, ready. One more time. This is so terrible. This is so terrible. I feel terrible. like your I people watching this back. Exactly. Like, how did you how, exactly? This is so terrible. I, I already knew this was gonna go well because I used to play these games. Yeah. Uh, you wasn't good at charades. Went, it never charades. went exactly. It never went well for me. So I already knew. All right, let them know. Busy black business. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna hey, I'm clap you up for giving it. Hey, brother. I it promise good. you, this is gonna be a good interview. Oh, of no, course. No, you know, of this course. Is, you know. That was, a, that was a fun little one for Don't y'all. Play, play me a charades, you'll win. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's talk. Let's get to know the man, Jermaine Weeks. So talk to us about you know um, just your background, like growing up, the the fam- family situation, things you like to do when you were young, what you were interested in. I grew up um, in uh, East Flatbush, mm-hmm. uh, like pretty close to where the, the shop is. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, I grew up with um, Caribbean parents. Mm. Um, they were both from St. Vincent. They met in St. Vincent. Oh, fine. Wow. Yeah, they met um, in high school uh, at a netball game. Wow. Y'all know that is, that is. is that is very Caribbean. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> that is the most Caribbean <laughs> As you could get. Yeah, my mom used to play netball, and my father was there. You know, my father got a little smooth. Mm. That's maybe where I got it from. <laughs> you know, and um, yeah, then they came here. Um, not together, mm. um, but my father had a little, little situation. And then my mom, you know, took him in, helped him out. And then from that reconciliation mm-hmm. came me, I brother guess. Jermaine, yeah, right? Brother Jermaine. Yeah, Brother Jermaine, you know. So, um, and, you know, they were together. They still together my whole life. You know, they've had a lot of yeah, yeah, yeah. ups and downs, though. It's It was a pretty interesting upbringing. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to, you know, protect. You know, I had to do a lot of things at an early age. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um. I wouldn't trade the way I grew up for anything. My yeah, father yeah, was yeah. there for me when he needed to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My father, you know, I was loved. I, I got a little sister that, nice. you know, um, means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. But, you know, when you grow up in Flatbush, you grow up in Brooklyn, you grow up in New York City, you know, once you get to them adolescent ages, there's nothing that you want to do. Yeah. You know, you just got to, or L.A., you yeah. know, or, you yeah, know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to grow, and hopefully you get the opportunity to grow because not mm-hmm. everybody does. You know, things happen, and... You know, people don't realize when you're in high school and stuff, you're not even your brain's not even all the way developed. You mm-hmm. know, so I'm just happy that you know I got through those times. Um, my mom actually sent me away oh, to wow. Iowa. Wow, Iowa, Iowa. Yeah. When I was uh, 17, to finish finished high school because she didn't want me around. Oh, wow. uh, just because of the people I was around and things like that. Right. Yeah, Iowa, Iowa. She sent me to the as far away from anything that could happen to me. As possible, so wow. I actually was the first black kid ever in that school, Whew. ever, My like ever. You West know? Indian at that, a West mm-hmm. Indian, but you know it was interesting. It was, it was no racism. It, they kind of, it kind of was like the opposite. They treat me like a trophy. Mm. Wow, they just want to learn anything wow. about black culture, yeah. right. and Brooklyn, and <laughs> they got the Jordans on. They never really <laughs> seen that up close, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So um, it was interesting, and then you know I left there. I went to HBCU. Which is a total opposite, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I feel like I'll be in any room, you right. know, because just you know how opposite that was, and then that was the best experience, one of the best experiences of my life, just to be around us so much, mm-hmm. yeah. and to really embrace, you know, yeah. our culture, and not and to not have to like, you know, just be us, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. And then I met people from D.C. and Philly, and I realized how different, different parts of, uh, you know. 
the country we are and our accents and the way we dress. And it was just really like a culture shock for me that was a beautiful culture shock mm-hmm. and it made me embrace just all aspects of us. Yeah. Yeah, then I came back, you know, got a corporate job, got into art, got into cafes, and mm-hmm. then I decided, you know, I wanna do it. I didn't know how I was gonna do it, but I knew I was gonna do it. Mm. You know. So I had no idea how though. So, so we were I was reading somewhere, somehow and Armand put it in the intro. You founded Lips Cafe based off of a bad haircut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need one right now. Someone zinged you <laughs> and you figured out, let me do a coffee shop. Tell us, walk us through that story. Um, Yeah, so I, I was living in Mill Basin at the time, so I was getting my haircuts on Saturdays and not Fridays okay. um, because uh, that's he leaves at 7 o'clock. My barber in Mill Basin leaves at 7 o'clock okay. like, every day. So right. if you... When I'm leaving work, I'm never going to catch him. Right. So I usually go on Saturdays, but I needed a haircut this night. Because to be honest, I've never said this like publicly. <laughs> I've never said this publicly. I say this in private. But, you know, so many, so many years ago, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. But, like, I had a date that I was excited about. Mm-hmm. Right. So I was okay. like, I got to get this I haircut. Gotta like, you know, I got to get this haircut. That's, like, not no, that's not weird. Yeah. No, it's weird if people, you know, back then think I, about that. I Who guess. was, what date was that? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Was it right. me he was with? Like, you know right. what I mean? But, oh, uh, okay. I see. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, yeah, I needed a haircut. Um, and I went to my old neighborhood, which is where the cafe is. And I was like, um, I know they're going to be open because it's like a black party. They, it's like a club. They don't leave the barbershop till like 2 a.m. Yeah, and my barber, right. when I was growing up, was there. So I knew somebody would be there. Yeah. Matter of fact, there's three barbershops on the block. Right. So definitely somebody's going to be there on a Friday You're night. You're getting a cut. I'm getting a cut. So I went to my old barber shop, but I didn't see my old barber because mine, it's been like years, 10 years, mm-hmm. you know, more than that. You know, I haven't been on that block maybe in three, four years. I don't know how long. So I didn't see him. So I ended up leaving. I know the other barbers, but it was packed. It was a small barber shop. So I was just like, I'm going to go to one of the other ones. So I went down to another one and I should have known not to oh, go there. I should have known not to go to him because it was a Friday night and he was sitting in his chair. With no one. With no one. Yep. Yep. So yep. I should have just knew like, it's always them. But I was that desperate. So Ooh. I was like, you know what? I'm going to get this haircut. That man, man put the hairline. Oh, Ooh. man. I still had to wear a hat. You know? So <laughs> <laughs> I still had to wear a hat. But, um, you know, the beauty of that is when I left there, like three doors down, I saw the Felice sign. And okay. Yeah, I had like a light bulb moment. It was just like all the algorithms, all the <laughs> scenarios. It was like just a crazy moment. Because like I said, I wasn't looking for this. I was looking for it in my mind, but I wasn't like tactically looking yeah, for it. Like exactly. it wasn't something that I was like, all right, I got these 10, 20 shops that I'm gonna go look at for this space. I got this business plan. It was really nothing like that. Wow. I really just came back from Art Basel in Miami. Yeah. And I was very inspired yeah. by um just people living out their dreams, people living in their creativity, people being able to live off their creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was so inspired by that, you know, knowing I have to go back to my job. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's whatever we want to do. Like mm-hmm. if somebody wants to be an accountant or a teacher and that's their that's what they want to do that fulfills them. Right. Or they want to be whatever, a garbage man, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that fulfills them, then kudos to you, but that's just not what fulfilled me. You mm-hmm. know, so I always knew I had more to give up, more I wanted to do. Um, I always knew that I just, you know, I never looked at things like by these social norms and these this is the way things have to be. I wanted to like, put my hole in the matrix. Right. Mm. So uh you know, I, I was so inspired, and I've always been in the cafes. I've always been in the art galleries. So for years, like, all my friends used to be like, why are you just going to this art gallery? Like, you know, what are you getting from this? You know, yeah. you know, really, because they didn't understand it. Like, you mm. know, and I'm just going. I'm not benefiting from this. I'm not getting anything to come here. I'm just really going for the love. And it was really just, you know, watching people manifest, you know. These ideas are now in the moment. This was an idea. Now you're in the moment. Exactly. You know what I mean? This yeah. is an idea. Now you're in the Whitney. That's really what resonated with me the most. Yeah. So um, I used to, and before that, I used to go to coffee shops because I worked. I worked out of coffee shops. I worked from home. Oh, dope. So I couldn't work from home though. So I used to find different cafes in all over the city. So that's mm-hmm. how I got into cafes and art. Like, and I we met so many dope people in those in those avenues. So I always knew I wanted to do something that incorporated both of them. And I was I didn't realize at the time that at all these galleries I was going to, all these coffee shops, cafes I was going to, I was piecing together what I liked about them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What I didn't like about them. I didn't realize that subconsciously though I was doing that. So like the the shop that I have is really like uh 
combination of a lot of different things. I saw a lot of different places, mm. but with my twist on it. You know, like there's a lip logo there because one, it came from my mother, but really because I realized that a lot of the coffee shops and cafes I saw, the themes okay. brought people back. Because coffee's coffee. You have to have good coffee, but yeah. it's, you know, the themes and the name and the culture is like, the space. And, the, yeah, and the just the aesthetics of it exactly mm. which is what just like brings, draws people back in. You know, and I, I was just taking on that empirical data, you know? Yeah. So, but fast forward to that day. Um, yeah, that's what happened. They messed me up, you know. <laughs> uh, I went on a date, you know. Uh, it was good. It was a good date. Mm-hmm. You know, in the end, it didn't work out, like, months later you know, on. Yeah. But, you know, I always think about her sometimes. <laughs> it was like, yo. it wasn't it was, for that yeah, date, yeah, like, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It probably had no lips, so. Thank you uh, wherever you are, man. Yeah, yeah you, know, you know. Lips you know, Cafe. You know, uh, You're not getting you no royalties, are. though. Oh, no, 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 You know, you know, so you had to stick around for that, you know. Yeah. But, uh, but that was really where it came from. And um, it's funny how. When I think about, you know, lips and just on a general generic way, it's funny how like the steps you don't even know you're taking to get some. Yeah. 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 And then you realize when you look back, like, oh, this is how it happened. Mm-hmm. But in real time, you you don't even know it's happening. You don't see you know? it. So yeah. that's that's what I think about when I think about, you know, Lips Cafe. That's so- and just, you know, all that stuff. It's amazing. So as we said in the intro, um, this is something that you started with your mother, Donna. And, you know, one, one of the things about business is going to business with people that you have a close relationship with, mm-hmm. whether they're friends or family, um, it, it's a different dynamic. You kind of have to learn how to operate with one another. And I, and I saw in one of your interviews, uh, the Who's the Chef interview, you're like, sometimes me and my mom, we go at it, we get heated, and then we just laugh it off in the moment. So, like, talk about the the what you've gained and, like, what's, like, the most gratifying part of going into business with, with your mother. The most gratifying gratifying uh, part of it is that we uh, collectively gave each other like purpose mm. yeah um that we you know since I was a kid she always wanted to open up a storefront she wanted wow. it to be like more like clothing though mm-hmm. okay you know but I was just like you know you gotta it's better to build a name in clothing than do a storefront so you know you could build you know, if you want to get back to that, you know, build lips and then now you have these connections. Now you have these, you know, avenues to get back into your passion. Like, I remember in the interview we did with um, Nike last week, she said something that resonated for me that I never heard her say before. She said she treats her food like fashion. Mm. Oh, wow. And that was deep to me because I know fashion is her life. Wow. And um, I was like, wow, like, that makes a lot of sense, you know, and that's probably why people gravitate towards it. because she, if that you, heart if you, she's putting in. Yeah, it. because if you... If she's treating the food like fashion, she loves the food. Mm-hmm. She loves fashion. She breathes it. She breathes it. She started a fashion um, brand when my grandmother died to keep mm-hmm. her name alive. Mm-hmm. So fashion connects it to my grandmother. Wow. You know? Yeah. So when she said that, I know. I was like, oh, they don't got nothing to worry about the food. They're going to be... <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be right. They're going to be eating good. Right. They're going to yeah, be yeah, full. Yeah. They're going to be tasty, you know? Mm-hmm. So um, that's one of the most gratifying parts of it. Another thing is just... um. You know, because, you know, it's family, mm-hmm. we treat everybody like family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it just reverberates, right? Of it's course. just natural, you know, it's every, you know, it's love. So I feel like everybody that really comes in that space, whether they get their food quick or they have to wait sometimes, mm-hmm. you, know, cause, you know, it's fresh food. It's fresh. Busy. Listen, it, you know, things goodness happen, takes you know, time. but, you know, it's like, it's funny. I never seen so many play, a place where, like, sometimes you know, people do have to wait. They, they smile. They're like, it's okay. Like, you know, <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm in a lot of places where that's right, right, not their reaction, like you they know what I mean. Fly. So, yeah. but um, it's part of it, you know. You know, so because of the love, you know, mm-hmm. because everybody that comes in there feels comfortable. They mm-hmm. never feel rushed out. Yeah, they never feel like they gotta get a million things. You know, yeah. they never, you know, they never feel that way because we don't treat it that way. We mm-hmm. don't treat it as a transaction. You know, we're just grateful if anybody comes of through course. those doors because mm-hmm. they don't have to. At they all. literally don't have to come there. It's a choice. Yeah. So you know, knowing that they made that choice. You know, to come and vibe with us, I gotta reciprocate that energy. You know, and we reciprocate energy. And I just think because of us, because of the way we vibe and we laugh with everybody, like everybody knows us. Like we we cool. It's not you know, it's just an amazing thing to see like the community we built there. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just amazing. Everybody calls her ma. That's all. Oh, you know, she nice. got like a million kids. <laughs> oh, People fine. holding her, calling her ma because they wow. even go like you know, it's just you know. So it's just. That's what I, I I love the most the love that we built love in that, that space the love that we were able to translate 
mm-hmm. to others, yeah. you know, along with giving each other purpose. You know, I love it. Yeah. So you officially opened October fifteenth, twenty nineteen. So we're in twenty twenty two right now. So it's been a uh, it's been a, a little little over two years now. Yeah, yeah. going on three years. Year it was November twenty fifth. November twenty nineteen. Yeah, November twenty nineteen. It's been like a little over two years. Yeah. Um, and we opened right before that pandemic. Um. And wow. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask, like, yeah. what, what was that like? You know, you were you were around for a few months, and then you kind of gotta adjust things and go to the, you know, the 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 take the takeout or the yeah, or the yeah. the to go drinks, yeah. things like that. Like, how, how how did you all adjust with the with the pandemic? Uh, it was a lot because I mean, we never had our footing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were like just starting to like see like the okay, it's working. Like February, that yeah. February, because that mm-hmm. those first couple months were brutal. Um, and that February, it was like, okay, this is starting to make sense. Cause yeah. I was nervous. I was like, mm. did we make a bad decision? Like, you know, yeah. you know, I, cause I was so confident. It takes time. bro. You know, I was so confident. Like, yeah. you know, if you watch that, that Kanye documentary, I was confident like that in myself. <laughs> like, you couldn't tell me nothing about mm. Lips Cafe. I was like, it's going to work. Like, yeah. you know, I thought it was going to work from day one. Right. And it definitely didn't. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it definitely didn't. Um, but, um. So yeah, it was that was bad because you know we just were getting our foot and then that just hit us, and then um we had to adjust to everything. We went home for like a month, mm-hmm. and um I used I utilized that time to rest and to research. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Lips Cafe pre, you know, March and post March it was totally different. Right. Um, like before that, we would like <laughs> subscribe into like uh. Just the way coffee shops are, mm-hmm. like bagels and egg salads. Stuff, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, it's locks, flatbush. Yeah, it's flatbush, yeah, right? Locks, they don't want, do they want that? Yeah, <laughs> locks and cream cheese. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's what we were doing. And when I went home, I was just like, we're Caribbean. Because I was listening to people, you know, they was like, you ain't got no hard food. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you ain't got no rice. <laughs> you ain't got no pasta. No fried you dumpling. Got, you know, no you dumpling. Got you ain't got bro. nothing. You ain't, you giving me locks? <laughs> and what is locks? Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. I didn't even know what locks was. Like you know what I mean? That's so, um, so I went home and I just started researching. I learned how to barista at home. I started watching YouTube oh, things because I had to learn. Yeah. So when we get back, it was just us, you know. So I had to learn. I told that time. I, I I went to all the coffee shops I liked, Gregory's, Starbucks, just the big ones and the local ones, and I just studied their menus to see what we didn't have. Mm. So I came back with like turmeric and. Just all fraps and smoothies all stuff, and yeah, all these yeah, different yeah. things, you know. Um, I used that time to like grow us. So we came back with rice, you know, we developed salad, you know, it just became a whole new cafe, like a mm-hmm. Caribbean cafe for real, where you feel like this is Caribbean. You mm-hmm. feel you know, you know, it's Caribbean. We also got pastries, we also got certain sandwiches, but you know, this is us. Yeah, you know, we're gonna fire. treat this like yeah, us, yeah, but yeah. we put our own spin on it, you know, and in, in our recipes and stuff like that. So um that's what, you know, and then, you know, coming back, it still was slow. Like, the first month we came back, I mean, it was the slowest month we ever had. Even, it was slower than the first month we opened. Wow. But I think, you know, a turning point with us, you know, had to do with us, but also had to do with the climate and environment. You know, I always say, um, George Floyd, you yeah. know, um, when that happened to him, mm-hmm. he became a martyr for black business. Yeah. yeah. You know, because it created a roadmap. For black businesses, we just wanted to support us, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. And so, like now, all the black businesses in Brooklyn or LA or Chicago or whatever is literally on Instagram, and they making like all these, you know, hey, if he's flappers, this is it, best style, this is it, you know. So a lot of people started coming after that, and I, you know, I think we we gave them, we made a great impression wow. on people that were just coming to the support, and that reverberated a little bit, wow. and then we were able to. uh to sustain because that was a really hard time that was a very you don't know what's gonna happen next you know nothing was certain at that time yeah nothing was certain for any of us you know it was just and even just this I was so scared you know what I mean like you don't know you just think you know it was just a crazy scary time Mm -hmm. and the fact that we you know made it through that I feel like we can make it through anything then you know indoor dining goes then you got to build outdoor space. Then it's only delivery. So we had to learn. We, all these things that we did, were like, oh, we'll, we'll worry about that later. We had to learn like how to do Uber. You know, we had to learn how to just do all these things because it was the only way. Right. Because yeah. there was no indoor diners. There was nothing. So we just had to be very open-minded, listen to the community around us, and protect the community around us. Absolutely. And just adjust. And that's yeah. the thing. That's the, I think that's one of the 
best things about you know Lips Cafe is that we are open to adjust. We're open minded. We're, yeah. we're, we're able to make changes. We're just we're we you know you can't really define what Lips Cafe mm-hmm. is. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have a question about. You know, what's it like? You, you call yourself, you know, like a cafe, but also mostly a creative space. What is it like curating uh, what people will call a creative space in a place like NYC where a lot of creatives are, but there's also seemingly a lack of opportunity at the same time? So, like, how have you navigated that um, as, you know, being someone who is trying to create space for creatives? Yeah, from the very beginning, I, I always was intentional about Lips Cafe not being my space but our space mm. yes um because I, like i said i come from that neighborhood and i know that when i was in high school it would have helped me a lot just to have a place mm. to go to just to sit down mm. there really wasn't any place to like sit down and get anything done or just get out of your home or the block or it was really no place to go to like when i think about it, it was all everything's fast food everything's you know a caribbean restaurant where i love but it's just in and out. You know what I mean? There's no libraries in that area. Mm. You know, so I was very intentional about it being a space that people could go to. Sit down somewhere. To sit down and just get away from what's going around. You don't know what people go through at home. Yeah. You don't know what people go through outside. You don't know their mental states. You don't know if they just need an oasis, a yeah, respite yeah. from reality mm. for a second. You don't know if they how hard they're working to maybe finish that paper, but they they don't have, they don't have, it's too noisy where they are or yeah. they don't have a place to go to. You don't know if they're working on their next art piece or right. they're working on then clothing launch or they're trying to get this job and they just need some place to send out resumes. You don't know what's going on in people's lives. Mm-hmm. So I've always been very kind of that and, and to piggyback off that, I always wanted people to be able to create and see, you know, their ideas in real time. Because I told you that's what art did for me. You know, yeah. so I want I want people to be able to like have this idea and be able to get it out, even if, because a lot of times I don't charge. You know, there's times I do. It just depends on the event. But a lot of times I would just let I was just let people you know manifest or get out there because that one seeing that one time mm-hmm. has sparked them forever. Yeah, you know what I mean. They just I, now they see it now it's real. Even if on this level it's still real. Now it's like it's possible. And you're the one that gave them that look. Too. You know. I'm the one that gave him that look, but you know, I don't even want to take responsibility. Not even that yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 it's you know, like, you know it's, yeah. a, it's each one teach one. Exactly, yeah, exactly, no, of course. Exactly, you know, exactly. exactly. Like, like tonight, you know, I did an event um, where they were raising money for a Grenada documentary. Mm-hmm. Great, you know, she and she just wanted to do like a, a, a fundraiser, crowd right, fund. Right, right. Now, you know, we built a relation where maybe every two weeks, every three weeks, they're gonna do, you know, an event there just based on that, and. That's what means the most to me to be able to create people because it inspires me, mm-hmm. you know, just like maybe I inspire them. Yeah. And I just want everybody to be able to utilize that space in whatever way benefits them. That's beautiful. You know, so it's very important to me for people to just be able to like do their thing in that space. And, yeah. You know, I have people bringing candles, bringing clothes. I have people, like I said, you know, sometimes I have chefs take over the space. That's tough. You know, yeah. I just, have, you know, because it's, why not? Yeah. You know, why not? Like, mm-hmm. you know, pe- you know, like it's it's very tough. Like what I realized through, you know, this, you know, this journey that I'm on is how hard it is for people to find spaces like that. Man, how hard spaces on. make it. Whew. You know what I mean? And Where's it, you the know, space? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, when Where you re- is it? and when you really think about it, like for me, different places, there's some places that, you know, all they get is like their rental space. So they have yeah. to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at seven, eight, nine o'clock every day, I close. Yeah. You know, it cost me nothing to have them come in after that. Mm-hmm. And in fact, you know, maybe they they bring a whole crowd of people that never met Lips Cafe. Mm-hmm. I have drinks there. I have food there. You know, it could be it's symbiotic in a sense mm-hmm. if you want to look at it that way. Completely. You know, so I don't have to be like, hey, give me $400 an hour no. and you can't do this to the space. I always tell people, you can manipulate the space the way you want as long as you don't damage anything. Right. It's your event. Right now, it's your space. It's not right, mine. Right, right, right. You know, so... I, but I'm I'm I really a big thing I, I want to get into you know this year is um making it easier for creators to find spaces not just my own because now I have a lot of you know friends you mm-hmm. know that have shops so you know if maybe I can't do it tonight you know I could hit this person up and mm-hmm. see if they will be open to it right you know I, it's very important to me to try to you know 
help that situation yeah, because yeah. it's a big void. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a huge void yeah. for people just trying to get out ideas. It's you equity know? in the community, for of sure. course. Yeah, of course, because if I'm, you know, we each other's resource. We each other's resource. You know, so mm-hmm. we gotta be that, especially mm-hmm. for us. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? Especially for like us. Yeah. You know. Black Future Month, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask, what's what's your favorite item to get from Lips Cafe? Yeah, what we gotta have? What's the? Yeah. We walk in the door. I can see myself walking through the door. Lips <laughs> Cafe. What we ordering, bro? Me? Yeah. Or no. You, or you, you, or you or somebody? You, else. You, what you, you ordering? Well, what you ordering, and then what would you suggest? Okay. What I'm ordering could be the same thing. Just because uh, I'm a big coffee junkie. Mm-hmm. I'm getting it. Eight ounce Americano with steamed regular milk and mm-hmm. putting some sugar in there a little bit because that's just what I drink. But if, if somebody that's coming in, um, I would say it depends on what you want. So I'm gonna go like a little like down the list. Like if it's food, I would say definitely get a bacon sausage is our most popular item. Mm-hmm. It comes with plantains and avocado. Ooh, Ooh, love absolutely. me some avocado. Yeah, you know. Um, Need then that. a lot of people, anything salmon. Mm. Yeah, you okay. Know, people get, you know, so we have like salmon rice bowls. Okay. We got salmon rasta pasta. Yeah, got like lunch mm. too. Yeah. Like your lunch and dinner stuff. Yeah, yeah. we do. Y'all we do got, brunches too, us. We do brunches, yeah. Oh, we, we're going to get more into that like when March, April comes. We're going to get back into that. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, we in there. Get that mimosa. Y'all got the rum punch. Mimosa rum punch. You know, we got the rum yes, punch. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, so uh, I would definitely say, you know, um, anything salmon. We got pasta. We got sal- mango salsa salad that a lot of people Ooh. great. Oof. Um, okay. And we also have like jerk salmon wraps, jerk chicken wraps. Absolutely. Um, you know, we have a Trish BLT that a lot of people get. It's, it's basically a a BLT with avocado. Um, so those are like the food items. Um, oh, and a plantain boat. Yeah, it's a sawfish plantain boat. You get a sawfish stuff. A whole and a plantain. Whole plantain. Oh wow! And mango sauce on it. That's very popular. Need for that. Us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, if it's like a coffee item, I just think we have so many flavors. I just think I like when people get. Um, Creative with it, so like yeah. we could do it like a lavender rose latte. We could do like a lavender pistachio rose. latte. Sounds like my type of place. Yeah. You know how bougie I am. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's big lavender exactly. rose he's, latte. Yeah, you people to like, soul. I remember one time somebody came in there and they saw it on the list, right? And this is I never forget this. They said they saw the rose on the list, like, and they said they said, "Can I get a rose latte?" I said, "Oh, oh my she. god!" I said, "Oh, That's she so uh, black." I said, exactly. I said, "Oh, she she put the pastry on yeah. top, like you know, she just did that herself." Like I, I started looking for rose flavor. I was like, "Maybe there's a rose flavor," yeah. like you know. So because I, I have like it's very Caribbean. Like, we have like mango, mm-hmm. like a lot of flavors that a lot of people have. I put my Caribbean twist on it, so like I have like Absolutely. mango, ma- mango flavor, banana flavor, passion fruit flavor. Mm-hmm. So I was just like. Like just have fun with the flavors. Mm-hmm. Um, I, the, our chai is amazing. Our hot chocolate is amazing. Yeah. Um, then if it's like alcohol, you know, my red lip is my favorite. It's, okay. like, a, it's like a rum sorrel passion fruit concoction. Ooh. You know, so and we use a lot of our we juices. Out. Yeah, we I, out. <laughs> I, like our house juices, we 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 use to mix. Um, Absolutely, we use to mix a lot of drinks, so it mm. it, it can't taste like anything. Like our ginger pineapple with douce. It's like a drink you can't get anywhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, our mango lemonade or passion for lemonade with casa, mm-hmm. you can't get anywhere else. So because it's our in-house drink. So yes, we, we try to utilize that a lot. So, I mean, you can have fun at Lips. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of, it, whatever your forte is, you know, if it's juice, if it's tea, we have a million tea flavors. I'm the tea got, guy. Yeah, you know, we got like black lavender, vanilla black. You know, we got Absolutely. like... I, we African had lips rose. with it. We yeah. had lips with yeah. it. Yeah. Y'all gotta yeah. come. Yeah. I take care of you guys. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't say first shot on me, but for y'all, I'll say first tea bag. On yeah, there you go. I'll take the tea. I'll take the shot. Yeah. Yeah. We do. Listen, we do shots too. We do. We do. Exactly. We do. So we got it. Amazing. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for your time, man. Uh, if there's nothing that y'all get from this interview, it is that lips doesn't serve coffee. They serve community. And that's that's what it sounds like. So c- salute to you on what you're doing for the East Flatbush area, whether it's the food, whether it's the space for other creators. We look forward to what you're doing next. We, we know you got some merch here. If you want to show the people, yeah, oh yeah, um, this show them what you got. Yeah, this first uh, thing is a it's a hoodie. Um, it says Lips Cafe. It plays off of the word we got that you're talking about. You know, yeah. Lips Cafe in, in Brooklyn. Amazing. And we partnered with this this brand in Philly called I Got You Black. Mm. So if you can see like their logo here, you okay. know, bad, I got bad, your bad. black in general. Look them up; they're really dope. Nice. Um, this is just a staple, you know, brand hoodie. 
I mean, Brian Krunek, mm-hmm. you know, with the, you know, with the purple, with you know, the, the, the signature lips, lips. The, the signature real moisturized, yeah, they got, moisturize, yeah, they real moisturized, you know, they glossy, they glossy, you know? <laughs> and then you know, you got the hat on. Those hats you are like our signature. Me. It's like our signature. Um, you feel me? It's you got our the mugs. Yeah, you got the mugs. You know, but that's our signature thing. Like those mm-hmm. coming. The go, hat is hard. Those come and go real quick. Yeah, you know? yeah, um, yeah. And uh, so yeah, we got all we got the mugs. You know, we just you know, it's all about um. You know, the lips are symbolic to me because mm-hmm. they, they symbolize progression for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, that's what yeah. they symbolize for me. They're, they're symbol for that. They're symbol for family, a lot of things. So when I look at the lips, you know, I, I see a dope logo, but I also see, like, um, manifestation. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, anytime, you know, you rock with me, I'm going to have some lip on. So right now, <laughs> so you know, right now I'm supporting, you know, other brands. But, <laughs> you know, usually I have some lip on just, you know, because uh, it means the world to me. Yeah. Yeah, cause yeah. It, means, it means everything to me just because it... it it incorporates everything. It's the lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. the lip lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> Tune show, in next show, time. Show. You know, lip service. There you go. <laughs> the lip service All lifestyle. about the lip service. Love you that. Know, so. All right. Yeah. It means the world to you. And I'm, the work you're doing, I'm sure it means a lot to a lot of different Thank people. So. I, I also just want to say Please. one more thing. Um, like, artists and stuff like that, you know, like a, a big part of the space is just the gallery portion of it. Mm-hmm. You know, I look at it as a gallery. A real gallery, like everything in there, like I, I've that I've had, I feel like I'll see in Chelsea. Nice, you know, yeah. like I'll see, like I make it real intentional about it. So um, that's also really big to me to to shine a light on artists, um, you know, and in in all different forms of like paintings and art and stuff like that. And I've cultivated a lot of great relationships, and I've seen what that could do. Like somebody was just in Lips. Um, his name is Perry, and from that. He's now like commissioned in Miami, mm. you know, and um, that's that's one of my favorite parts about the space too that I, I didn't get to talk about, you know, just because I didn't bring it up. And I, now I'm thinking about it. I mm-hmm. want to like just say, you know, lips lips is definitely art space. You know, it's mm-hmm. art gallery to me. So love that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. The, the don't box lips in. <laughs> lips oh, yeah, do yeah, it all. <laughs> it's a creative space. That's my go. name for it. It's a creative space. There we know? go. Well, yeah. we're looking forward to being able to pull up for the first time. Grab a drink with you. Y'all make sure y'all pull up on Lips Cafe as well. 1412 No Strand Avenue. We're going to have all their info um, all over the social media for y'all. Thank you again, Jermaine, for pulling up. Congrats on what you're doing. Uh, I appreciate it. All I want from this, you know, is to have your sound bites for Lips. (laughs) (laughs) You got to send me those. I'm going to just have them going on the Bluetooth. Like, at random times. Like, you're just going to hear his voice. Like... It's commanded, and you just oh, you, you really you really you really did your thing with hey, that. Like you know, you, I appreciate you. that. It's thank an you, honor. man. It's an honor. I, I got to do what I can for the black yeah, business, man. man. Black you know, Black History Month. We gotta you know, give each other yeah, our flowers. Yeah, we in a black renaissance, and we gotta realize yes. that. Yes, I feel like fifty years from now, hundred years from now, they gonna talk about what we doing right now. Oh, of course. So absolutely. You know, let's absolutely. keep going. Let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing each other. Let's keep mm-hmm. looking out for each other. Cause like you know, like Jay Z said, you know, what you make don't make me shit. Mm-hmm. So let's just look out for each other yes. you know, yeah. as black people. Amen. You know? yeah. Amen. So great episode, great conversation with the guy. So for Jermaine from Lips Cafe, for myself, Armand, founder of Bald Nigga Ballers, Mac and Cheese Maestro, for the gumbo guy, Nick Early, kombucha king that makes your heart sing, we want y'all to stay safe, stay humble, and stay busy. Baby girl, baby.